<laughs> Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 40 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I can't believe it's already episode 40 already. What? What kind of shenaniganry is that? Uh, I can probably get rid of this chest, because I don't think I need that anymore. Uh, I haven't really, like, checked in on this basement area since we... Let's see. I'm assuming things are running smoothly down here. Yes, the fact that we have an almost full tank is definitely a good sign. Tells me that things and stuff are good. Um, we've got this stuff going down here pretty smoothly. Nice. Um, last episode, we set up uh, an animal farm real quick. And uh, we've now got a decent amount of pork chops, leather, and beef. Courtesy of all that cool stuff. Um, what I'd like to work on today... Uh, it was a mystery. I thought I had a good idea of what I was going to work on. What was I going to work on today? Oh, right. I was going to improve uh, the crop growth situation that we've got going on. So uh, you may recall, see you later, animals and monsters and terrible things. Um, you may recall that last episode we were kind of taking a look at um, how our crops were doing. Uh, and the answer to how are our crops doing was, meh, they're all right. That was legitimately the answer. Um, so, so what I'd like to do, what's like the top, which hotkey is it? <coughs> there we go. Uh, 11 by 11 is the best that we can do here. So what if I were to like water here? Like that's pretty good. It's not bad at all, honestly. Uh, what about like right here? Would that... That kind of touches on a little bit of everything, doesn't it? Um, that's kind of a nice spot. So what if we tried setting up something to automatically watering can our crops? Does that sound like kind of a neat idea? Uh, now, it, it's obviously not going to cover the entire farm with that 11 by 11 area, right? Because the farm itself is zoinks let's see for is it is it is it 13 by 13 so actually that's pretty close that's pretty close let's see there to here is what we're talking for 11 by 11 so that's actually going to cover most of the farm the, the the sprinkles there didn't do it justice but that actually pretty darn close um, so what if we wanted to automate this, right? Um, there's a couple options we could go with. So let's start with a few things. Um, uh, a mechanical user might be able to do it, but that right clicks a bunch. Uh, so there's, there's the thermal machine that right clicks, right? Nullifier, thermal, are we all aquatic entangler? What's that? Catches fish. Oh, neat. That's something to keep in mind that exists. Fluid allocator. Stores and transfers fluids. Uh, where's, where's the uh, user, like the mechanical user type thing from this mod? Well, we could try a mechanical user and see how it goes. It might work out that it'll work. I'm actually not 100% sure. Um, so let's, let's start with a mechanical user and find out if a mechanical user with a watering can in it will actually you know, do stuff on farmland, because that would be cool. And I wouldn't mind maybe having some speed upgrades. Um, do you know how to make more of these? Probably not. <coughs> um, so I, I learned a little bit better about how speed upgrades work. Um, you can have more speed upgrades with higher levels instead of being limited. But first things first, we're going to try this kind of a little bit all at once. So what I'm probably going to want here is... that that now how did that happen there we go uh fill up this dude real fast and we're gonna see if this actually works because if this works then we will have a nice way to kind of speed up our farm's production of, the, of stuff um, if it doesn't work, I'm going to have to find a block that it does work in or come up with another solution, which I totally have an idea for. So I do have a backup plan if this doesn't work. But for now, you're going to go in there. We're going to say upper left slot, right click, place block, 
Doesn't seem to be anything. It's probably use item on block. Activate block with item. Use item. I saw something grow, but I think it was just a random growth tick. Now what we could try is this. It might help. If there was an actual seed planted there for it to right click on. Use item on block. Hmm. Activate block with item, use item. None of these things are actually working. So I'm trying all the things. Auto placer from actually additions, block placer from industrial foregoing. Thus far, no such luck. We will keep trying. All right, so let's go with the assumption that this isn't gonna work. So we're gonna move on to plan B, because uh, I tried like a bunch of block placers and pretty much none of them did anything. Uh, so let's get some fancy greenhouse glass, uh, wherever it is. There it is, greenhouse glass, dun dun dun, from actually additions. Now this is gonna require um, an impalus chrysalis block, which is made from impalus chrysalis. And this stuff um, is basically made with um, lapis, three prismarine, and a cyan dye. So I, I think now's as good an episode as any to start automating um, actually additions, because uh, we're getting to the point where we might need more of it. So let's get some gray bordered glass. <coughs> let's get a ranged collector, please, and thank you. Let's get a chest. Let's get a, uh, hmm. So, we're gonna have to test a little bit to see if we run into any problems with the whole auto crafting with actually additions things. There's a couple ways we can probably get around. We'll try item ducks first, and if that doesn't work, uh, then we'll try some other methods. Does that sound cool? Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna need a dropper, uh, and an automatic precision dropper is kind of one of the best ways to go. Um, I think I'm gonna need some redstone for a minute and some lapis. Probably also wouldn't be a terrible thing to have. Do, 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 do. And we'll put this here and that there and poof. And you do your thing. And that'll let us get the precision dropper and all the other cool stuff that we're gonna want. So automatic precision dropper is gonna need one of you and one of you. Just get a stack of that. To do compacting drawers, I know. It's like it's like a major to-do list item for me. So I the rest of that go in there. All right, so let's get, uh, and then we're also gonna want crafters. Probably gonna want a few of them for later anyway. We've got some cables, but we might want a few more. That might be enough. We might need another stack of that, give or take. That should be good. Uh, and that'll do for now. Are my crafters done, by the way? They're a work in progress. I guess you're doing your thing. Nice. It's kind of nice to see that thing working pretty well now. Switching the diamond instead of it being over here to being over here definitely helped with the, the interaction and the backstuffing. So we, I'm pretty sure, um, we do have some cabling cabling in this general area, don't we? We do. It, it leads up right about to here. So what I'd like to do is get some cabling up here-ish so that we can um, have maybe a crafter here, which by the way, is that done yet? Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, and then we might also, well, no, not there. Uh, that's not where I want the crafter to be, derp. Uh, we want a dropper probably here. Does that look about right? So that any item that goes in there immediately gets dropped and that should be cool. <clears throat> Yeah, that looks cool. So we're totally gonna want, hmm. I want it to look good. I like it being in the corner there, but I don't wanna put the crafter up there. So what I might wanna do is do a phantom face because phantom faces are cool. A phantom face is awesome. Let's set one of these bad boys up. So I want you to know how to make those. Uh, do you know how to make advanced coils? You don't, 
So it's time for you to learn coils and advanced coils and phantom faces require these guys so let's put them all down there in here zoinks and you're probably only missing now if i want to make one of these the two empowered diamantine crystals so let's get well we'll just do a block of it right and this guy requires what? Two clay, a clay block, and a light blue dye. To do clay. So this will get me this thing. So in theory, what we're gonna want is um, for you to drop there, right? I have a magnet on. We'll do something about that in a minute too. Clay block, two clay. So that should get me empowered diamantine, and then we can do a phantom face. Cool. And uh, we're gonna want. See, that looks pretty neat. I think I like that. And you're gonna do your empowering stuff, and that'll get me the empowered diamantine that I need. Nice. And then that can convert back to that. And I'll teach all these recipes here in a minute, but today's heavily about uh, getting this up and running and automating the things. So now we should be able to make a phantom face. It's a few crafting steps, but it's all good. Uh, and for that, we're gonna need a phantom connector. All right, uh, and that needs two eyes vendor. I have a lot of automation to do's, don't I? Cool. So maybe the range will not be too bad. We'll see. So basically what I'm thinking is if I were to put <coughs> this guy here and we Phantom connector. Did I cover this thing all the way around? I did. No, I didn't. Okay, cool. So block, sword, and connector. Is this too far of a range? Nope, it's good. Nice. So you can see the connection was made there. So this phantom face, oh, it has a 16 block range by default. Nice. Is automatically connected to that dropper. So now any items that get piped into this thing will go into the dropper, which is cool. Nice. Um, so part, you know what I'm actually going to do is move him. Not connected to anything. All right, so we're going to have to go get that click again. Click. And click. Now he's connected there. Sweet. Uh, and what I can do is just pop this in the wall here with the crafter. And that'll be kind of well hidden in the wall. Does that sound cool? And then we can just sneak off in this direction and find ourselves some cabling to connect to. And that'll allow us to get the first part uh, of anything going. Nice, online, beautiful. That's what I wanna see. Cool, so that will put the items into uh, the phantom face for us, which is totally step one, get items into the phantom face uh, to drop them into there. Cool. All right, step two is to automatically activate this atomic reconstructor when we want to. Um, can level emitters, so there's a level emitter from that. Um, so there's, there's this dude. So we're gonna want an improved processor, a machine casing, and like 10 of you. Items fluids. Emit signal when item is being auto-crafted. 
Oh, but you only have one filter slot. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. So what would have been cool is to say, like, emit a signal when you're auto-crafting, let's say, Palos Lapis, whatever, right? And then uh, it would emit a signal to turn that thing off, basically, when it's not running. If I could have more than one thing in the detector, but I can only have one. So that's a thing. Um, hmm. So another option. So basically what we want to do is when items are here, we want to cause this thing to run. Now, leaving impulse mode is 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 a problem, and I will show you why. Um, pressure plate, right? Let's say we dropped a full stack of items on here, right? Pulse mode only runs once per pulse. So if a stack of items came here and it got like half of them done, the other half would sit there, it wouldn't generate a new pulse because they'd still be on the pressure plate, and that would kind of be bad. Uh, so we don't want to run on pulse mode. In the past, there's been a couple different ways I've automated this. Basically, we want to keep this off until there's an item here. And as long as there's more than one item here, we can turn it back on. So let me think about how I'm going to do it. I've done it before with a couple different mechanics. Um, I want to see if there's a new way to go about it for you guys. And if not, we'll fall back to some old habits. So this method here is one approach to doing what, I, what we could do. Um, so in deactivation mode, which means it keeps running unless it receives a redstone signal. When it's receiving a redstone signal, it's deactivated. It works like this, right? So when there's an item on the pressure plate, it'll fire. It'll keep firing. It'll keep firing until the item is removed from the pressure plate, uh, basically like once it's done with all its crafts, right? So that's one approach to take on it. Uh, once the item's gone, the redstone signal turns on and the thing stops firing. The only thing I don't like about this build is that it requires um, just a little bit larger of an area. Like it just, a little aesthetically unpleasing. Um, we basically have to do this, which I guess isn't the end of the world. So we can do that. So basically what we'll do is we'll put the dropper above this point here, and then we're gonna have to rebind you, right? So you connect to that. The connection is fine and working, good. And that should be good, right? So that should all be cool. Uh, you can get back in place now, and that means we can do our stuff. So with that set up properly now, um, what I should be able to do is start teaching some recipes, which should be cool. Uh, not there. There. Nice. Okay, cool. So that should work. Uh, and then we just need the ranged collector there to pick up the items that we want to get and then stick back into the, the system, right? So for that to work, also I have to get power into this dude somehow, which I haven't entirely figured out. Uh, but I forget what the range on this thing is, but we're gonna whitelist uh, the following items from actually additions here. Let's put away some stuff we don't need. Uh, so we're gonna want Restonia crystals. Just rearranging, hang on a sec. Um, this thing. Void crystals, and let's get a diamond here, because we're gonna want diamantine to be, you know, good to go. So if we were to put that should create a diamantine crystal. Nice. So those items for now will go into the whitelist for this stuff. Whitelisting, all these things. And then we can set up an import bus. I dropped it, but it should have got in there. Nice. So an importer will suck those out, right? And that'll be good. Actually, I probably want that sandstone. Cool. And that can go right next to this dude. Oops. pretty much right here and that should work right and then they'll get imported into the system and they're good so that's how we're going to collect the items right so let's real quick test it uh by creating the four recipes that we're going to want right so from actually additions yeah that was right we're going to want you which is made like so yeah processing mode you 
One redstone becomes a Restonia crystal. One lapis. One coal. And the diamond team. These guys can all go over here. Into this dude. And now when I say, give me Restonia crystals, please, let's ask for 10 of them. Nice. And then they'll pulse and get picked up and then import bust. Cool, and that completes the craft. Beautiful, works great. Um, and we can cover up this flooring and make it all look nice again. Beautiful. The only thing that's missing is power here, uh, which I will have to run. What if we did a phantom face for power too? Just so we don't have to run cabling up there? Because I've got, underneath it, I've got that whole redstone thing going. So what if we taught you how to make the power-based phantom face? Because I like these guys. I like phantom faces, they're neat. They, they make it so that somebody who's like me, that's really bad uh, at doing things, like building, can actually succeed at not having wires all over the place. It's anti-dire wire block. You guys should love it. So, uh, now we'll have to teach you empowering, right? Um, so what I'd probably like to do, how am I for crafters here? We're good. Let's get, um, so right now, refresh my memory. Can I put more than a single item on here on these things or not? I cannot, they can only accept one item at a time. So that's good. So we don't have to filter the number of items that go onto those blocks. Uh, so let's get our signal and plated item dogs because we're gonna totally need that. And we're going to need four filters, definitely. Uh, we're going to need signal and plated item ducts, which is going to need, you know, more of more of this. So let's get four of you and some Electrum. Is that cool? And how are we for item ducts? Eh, we're not terrible. Might want a little bit more. Cool, so lots of auto crafting probably in progress. It's cruising, it's actually going pretty well. So another set of item ducts please. And then we can get the Signalum version. 14 might be enough. We're gonna find out if I'm right about that or not. So under here, what we'll wind up doing is replacing all these blocks here with signalum based item ducts. Am I crazy or did my hammer just, oh wait, I know what happened. There it is. <laughs> I might be off by like, one or two and that's gonna be annoying to me. Yep, I'm off by like two. So Electrum and Signalum should be pretty quick to get here. Come on Signalum, let's go. There we go. So this will go into here. Nice, so that'll give power to all those guys and there'll be item routing available, right? And then we'll want filters on these things to tell them what's allowed to go inside them. Um, so that should be cool, that should be cool. Let's get a filter on this guy and a filter on this one, cool. And then the last step is we need an item duct uh, on the center. So this doesn't need to be powered, so I'll just put an impulse item duct there. Uh, and I should probably filter him too, but I think he self filters. Um, but just to be safe, well, we could probably use the resonant filter. We just happen to have this guy, won't hurt. Probably don't need this many filters on it to be fair, but whatever. All right, so that's cool. Uh, we'll stick a chest, maybe, where do we want the chest to be? So you can come off there for now. So we're totally going to need, let's put the chest, let's turn this into a crate actually, 
Because a crate I can open if it's against the ceiling. Right? Um, we could put that there. And we could have our crafter up against it, like so. Is that right? I think it is. That's right. That's how I want it. Cool. Okay. So that will be the auto crafting for that dude. So then we just need some item ducks. And we'll want a servo to pull out of that guy. Let's do reinforced just so it's a little bit fast. I should teach it Signalum and Resonant as well. You pull out every one second. You pull out every half a second. We'll see how it goes. Cool. Okay. So that's good. So now we've got that going. So let's take a look at what's required now for... Um, an empowered Restonia block and Diamantine, right? So this comes from here. So let's put this in processing mode, right? An empowered Restonia block needs these things to make this, right? Um, and in non-processing mode, I want you to know how to turn Restonia crystals into a Restonia block. And you should probably start making more patterns. Cool. So. Regular Restonia Crystal goes here. The Empowered Restonia goes over here. In this dude. So then you're going to put the items that you need. So now if I said, give me a Restonia block, what do you need to figure out how to make? Just Nether Brick? You can make clay, redstone. All right, cool. So you just need to learn how to turn Nether Rack into Nether Brick. So that shouldn't be a problem, because all we need to do now is get a pattern pop it in here, put you in processing mode and say that. Turn off processing mode because I always forget. This is the redstone furnace that goes in there. Cool. So now if I said, give me a Restonia crystal, right? This dude, sweet, you should be good. So now the only problem that I'm gonna have here is that I also need to pull out of the empower. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem because in the past I've done this with Ender.io where you can extract and insert from the same side of the of the block. Um, so I might want to actually do this with a phantom face so that it's less annoying looking. So let's do that. So let's get another reinforced servo. Let's get another phantom face. Okay, and here's what we're gonna do. And let's get a uh, interface from you. So that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna stick here will be my phantom face that's going to link to this dude so that they're linked now, right? Um, and then we're gonna want Let's do it this way, and we'll break this connection, right? So that'll go in there. That will be filtered on what's allowed to go in, and then we can servo it on the way out with the servo I just made. And I'm pretty sure it might be smart, but let's whitelist anyway on what's allowed to come out of there. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna put sandstone. Um, so let's make sure this is off. Right, that's not going to extract. Let's request a empowered Restonia crystal. What that should do is drop all the required items directly into here. Nice, that's what I want to see. Boom. So now I can build my whitelisting. Right. So we will go to all the these dudes and say you are going to whitelist redstone. Okay. You're going to whitelist bricks. You're going to whitelist nether bricks. And you're gonna whitelist rose red, and then you're gonna whitelist the Restonia block. Okay, so now when I do that and tell this guy that he's allowed to extract an item a second, 
He should start doing stuff. And now we're going to see if we need to whitelist the extraction here. So in fact, I'm going to remove you and make you an empty blacklist. So you should be good. Wow, those uh, signal and plated item ducks are slow, aren't they? So let's see what's going on upstairs. So you haven't started extracting that yet, so that's a good sign, right? So you're on empty blacklist, always extract. I think the problem is he has nowhere to send it. Right, so let's get that interface. In fact, I wanna remove you for a sec, just to mess this up a little bit because I want to ensure that it's not going to extract. So didn't I tell you to craft an interface? You're probably stuck again. Interfaces are one of those things that tends to get stuck. Or not. Cancel. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's why. That's why. Cool. All right, so you're going to want to, in fact, what I might do is remove this, and we will item duct it straight into the appropriate thing so we don't have to mess with whitelists. Cool. So we can item duct this straight over to here. Who was it that predicted we would get dire wiry after a little bit? Right, so we can have our interface here. Cool, and that should work. Right, so you are not in fact extracting this thing. So I put this back in. When it's done crafting, it should extract. We'll see how accurate I am about that. So this thing is crafting, it's empowered Restonia crystal, and it extracted, and we should have a completed craft now. So if we look over here, this should be empty, and we should have an empowered Restonia crystal. Nice. Now the only thing I want to do is teach you to make that. Cool. Now you might be getting full, but luckily I've got another crafter here. Nice. All right, so now, uh, Let's do empowered diamantine crystals, right? Um, so a diamantine crystal block looks like that, right? Because I want to do blocks at a time. Um, and then in processing mode, I want to teach you that. And then I want to teach you that this comes from these, but not in processing mode. Cool. So now you should know how to make empowered diamantine as well. So you and you go in there. Oh, wait, that's the that one. That one goes in there. Cool. And that's the actual Restonia block. Neat. So now I'm doing the same thing for Palis as well. Um, and I should also teach you this. And do we have any prismarine? We do. To add to the whitelist over here for the range collector. So this way you know how to make prismarine automatically, right? So one of these dudes. So there you go. So that's your prismarine craft. That's your that guy craft. Uh, let's put these two in here. We can put, I might as well just do it right here because I'm putting next to it, that in there. And now, um, if I really want to, assuming I have enough clay, which I may not. Yeah, I totally don't. I don't have enough clay, but... Um, we should, we should, we, let me go see if I can find clay outside real fast. Because there is like a big lake, so that's a thing. Is the sun coming up or going down? Looks like it's coming up, so that's cool. Big river, be right back when I find clay. Clay mission complete. We're going to do that. So I don't want to waste diamonds right now, so I'm going to hold off on it. But I do want to teach it how to make... So if I asked for... An empowered palest chrysalis. It has to craft, so it has nine palest available. So let's actually remove those, and I want one of these. And this should craft everything down the line. So it has to craft nine palest from lapis. Uh, it, it turns those nine palest into a block. It puts the block with three prismarine shards and a dandelion yellow. Dandelion yellow. 
cyan die or dictionary mm -hmm. strikes again uh you probably don't want to use or dictionary probably neither do you and probably neither do you hello enderman what's an enderman just chilling in my base for that's what i want to know all right so hold on uh let me fix these real fast off camera to not use or dictionary seriously why is there just like an enderman chilling in my base like what's up with that Anyway, now those are unordered dictionary. I also taught it how to make cyan dye by smelting the cactus in a green dye. Uh, so with that recipe taught, now I should be able to ask for an empowered palest chrysalis block. Uh, and it should do everything it needs to do, right? So start. So those get dropped. They get poofed. They get picked up. They get imported. Then they go into here, and these guys need to get their whitelisting sorted. Uh, so I'll take care of that right now. Zoinks. So uh, it'll be easier to do it from up here. Right. So you can accept Palos Chrysalis blocks. You. One. Two. Three. And then that. Cool. So we put you back in there now that we've taught the whitelisting. Hopefully you're smart enough to like route individual items at a time. And what I might need to do, we'll see what happens with those three. It actually does seem to be being smart. Wow, awesome. So the three go to the right places. I wish it was faster with Signal and Plated Item Ducks. Signal and flux duct, signal and flux duct empty, plated fluid duct, plated item duct. Signal and plated impulse item duct. Okay, so that is a thing that exists. That's cool. To do, maybe swap those at some point. But that's working. So I'm going to call that a completed build, and I'm going to call that a completed episode. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We got to play with phantom faces. We got to play with all kinds of cool stuff. And look how... Nice this looks, frankly. I think it looks good. The glass, is it necessary? Eh, I like it there because sometimes magnets, but we'll probably look into getting a flower soon that prevents my magnet from working nearby this area. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard of a thing to get. But overall, uh, our, our crafting should be complete now, and we should have fully automated the two actual additions crafting stations. Nice. So if we look in here at Palis, we do in fact have nine Impaled Palace crystals. That is cool. All right, guys. Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. You know the deal. Take it easy.